Hey everybody, Barry here again. I think it's time we get this thing put back together. Don't you? It's almost there. Almost there. Last video, I made up this stuff here. This is the old shifter bracket that I shortened up to get the right length from park to drive because that's all the van has. Here is my bracket that I made for the transmission shifter. So this here bolts to the bell housing. Over here. So that bolts on right here like that. Shifter cable, which is right up here. Clicks into here and goes back and hooks up onto this one. So there's no actual modification to be done in this episode. Episode? Video? I don't know. Um, there's no actual modification to be done. All I need to do now is put it back together as quickly as I can so I can see if it runs. And it should go back together fairly well because at this point, this is probably my eighth or ninth time doing this. So I'm uh, getting pretty good at it. I know what size sockets, I know where all the bolts go. So I'm gonna buzz it all back together and time permitting, might have it running by the end of this video. We'll see. And if I pull it down in drive and it moves, I'm gonna be so extremely happy. So oh, everything's plugged back in, all the wires are tucked out of the way, kind of. It's done anyway, zip tied. I'll tie this onto the frame or something like that so it doesn't hook up in a rock or a rabbit. And now, I guess it's time to put it back up or down. I'm gonna go put the van down on the engine. I think it may have wiggled a little bit, just mainly from me pushing the transmission around and you know, trying to get it in place and stuff. So it's gonna be a process. Just put it down, wiggle it around, get the bolts lined up. Easiest way I've found to do it so far is to line up this bolt and this bolt because they're rigid. Line it up with the frame down here in their spots and then everything else will be pretty much lined up and I can just buzz the bolts up through it. Usually it's pretty fast. So I'm gonna go do that and I'm gonna, I'm gonna time lapse kind of as much as I can in this video, mainly because I'd like to have it started up and see if we can move at the end of this video. That way there is some sort of a triumph or another epic fail. Hopefully triumph, hopefully. Keep, you keep me in your, in your thoughts. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go put this down really fast, hook some stuff up, and I'll see about hooking up my auxiliary fan again. I'll put a connector in that so I don't have to keep cutting the wire and joining it in. At least then I can just unplug it again and um, then we'll check back and see where we're at.
Well, this is going really, really, really well. Or so I thought. Remember when I went to pull the engine out and my crossover pipe got all jammed up and I couldn't get it out with the cradle still in the van? It's still on the floor. It's supposed to be in there already. I might have some trimming to do. And I'm hoping I can just take off the wastegate and all will be well again. Maybe. I don't expect. If I have to, I don't mind trimming some of this garbage here out of the way because all that stuff is... I'd love to put the turbo right behind the headlight and not have this in here at all. That'd be really cool, but Cass would kill me. Uh, well, welcome to Station Road Rat Rods where I do steps three, four, and five first and then forget one, two, and three. I've said that a lot. This is getting way closer than I expected it to be. Dry shaft is bolted in. Cradle bolts are all up. Wiring is done. I'm so glad I made my harness like that. I know it's kind of untidy at the moment, but I'll clean it up. Just plugs in down here, plugs into the PCM. Done. No taking out fuse blocks, no taking out nothing. Everything is connected from, disconnected from the engine. Sometimes I find it hard to talk myself into doing it the long way, but when I do, I never regret it. Now, now I got turbo, which I don't have a gasket for, but there is some residual leftover stuff here. I'm going to bury that in ultra copper. Of course, you can see some of that here. Uh, I'll bury both sides and splatten it down. And then pray that none of it goes through the intake and destroys the whole engine. It won't because it's on the exhaust side. There's like no downside to that. Perfect. Oil line. Drain tube. The cool thing about the drain that it goes directly into the front of the pan. I made it like that so it could sneak by the crank pulley right here and right at the bottom of the turbo, no issues at all. Uh, exhaust side is done. Of course, you can see that I really do like ultra copper. I love this stuff. It's like the best stuff ever made. Uh, I'm gonna bolt the turbo on now because it's really hard to get at with the radiator and everything in there. So when I get that done, then I'll put the radiator and air cooler in, and I think she's finished. That's pretty scary. Well, I bolted the turbo on and realized that I don't have sleeves. I don't have long sleeves. This old header wrap is getting really, really rough. And it's super dried out and it's super frayed. And my arms are on fire. I, I tried soap and water. I tried dish detergent. Nothing will pull these thousands of little tiny glass shards out of my body. I need to get over it, I guess. I'm all on for the ride. I bought tickets to the game. Too bad. Whew, let's continue on. Uh, now, what do we got? This stuff. Uh, intercooler, radiator, transmission cooler. I think that's it. I gotta put the battery together. It's gonna be like an hour or two hours and I should be have it fired up.
Well, everything is done. Well, I just got to pour transmission fluid in it, bolt the wheels on, fix the pan hard rod, make sure it's all good, bleed the coolant. It's pretty much done. It's 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 all there. It's all there. Everything is hooked up. All my charge tubes, everything is done down to the turbo side. I just pulled out this dipstick and the transmission has lots of fluid in it. Not running, it's about a quart and a half over or two quarts over, so that's fine. I'm just gonna get it running, see if it'll warm up. Um actually I'm probably gonna go put a quart in it anyway because that cooler plus the lines are gonna hold a bit and they were dead empty, so I better do that now. So I'll do that and then we'll get it running because I wanna see if this thing's gonna run or not. Um, I'll pull it so the wheels are six inches off the floor and haul it down and drive. Hopefully the shifter thing works. If not, I'll just have to pop a little screwdriver in there, whatever. But uh, yeah, hopefully it works. It's getting a little bit too close for comfort now. Before I do it, actually, I'm just gonna run a tune through it. I won't bother to film that. I just gotta activate the knock sensors again. And that's pretty much it. I'll probably turn the fan temperature down. The on temperature, because I have this one here hooked up to the other fan. And I wanna make sure that they're on. Like, so I'll probably turn it on like 140 or something and just let the thermostat regulate the temperature inside the engine. And um, then just have the fans on all the time. So it's blowing through the intercooler, blowing through the rad, blowing through the transmission cooler because I think that the radiator in this isn't big enough in it anyway, so I'd rather have the fans come on really, really early and catch the rising of the temperature before it gets too high. So I'm gonna go and finish up those few things and we'll check back when we're ready to fire it. Well, the time has come. I got the laptop plugged in. I just ran the log, or ran the tune, I should say. And now I guess the only thing left is to fire it up and See if the transmission's gonna move. This is kind of heart wrenching at the moment. We'll see. I hope it moved in the van. So really, it's got no reason not to. There's always that one little tiny chance. But let's get it. Let's see what happens. Transmission needs a couple of quarts, so I'm gonna fill that up now before I go back at it again. I don't wanna burn anything up. And we'll check back in a sec. Well, attempt number two. I'm gonna leave the fan off so we can hear it. Um, I turned the idle up 100 RPM at 750 now to see how that is. Let's get it running. See if we can get those back wheels moving.
overflowed. She's thirsty. Well, I gotta run it again. I put two more quarts in. pushed through the brakes that's cool it pushed through the brakes when i when i put on the brake when it was in drive when i revved it up and put the brake on it kind of wanted to stall out but then i locked the brake on and it kicked back up i do have the torque lock lockup wire hooked to the brake pad or the brake pedal so i know that's not an issue but this is stuff that tuning is going to fix up i can't believe it moves i cannot believe it moves Oh man, it's actually starting to sink in a little bit now. Whew, that's cool. That is cool. Let's check the log, see what kind of wheel speed and stuff there was. So, apparently it was in fourth gear. <laughs> it went first, third, fourth gear. Uh, 70 kilometers an hour, 72 kilometers an hour when I revved it. Um, where are we at? When I revved it, went over 110 kilometers an hour. So that's exciting. That's exciting. Like no effort whatsoever. 2,400 RPM. Uh, that was when I let off. So let's go back a little tiny bit more. 30% throttle, 107 kilometers an hour. I I don't see any issues with the transmission at all so far. I'm hoping the sloppy trans brake is going to work. I did hit the switch just to see what would happen, but I'm not on the ground. I don't have, there's no load on the transmission per se, so I can't really tell if that's going to work yet or not. But it moves. That is a major step in the right direction. This is going to get exciting from here on out. Great success! <laughs> that was my best Borat impersonation. Didn't work. Um... Big, 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 hell yeah. Uh, I'm going to go bolt the wheels on it. I'm sure it's actually going to move, but I'm going to bolt the wheels on it, move it back and forth. Maybe I'll even try the sloppy trans brake and try not to put it into that. We'll see. If I get up on the converter a little bit, then I'll know it works. Um, and then I'm pretty much going to finish up there because late the, the night is getting a little bit late. And I have to work tomorrow, so I'll finish it up on the next video.
Well, let's see what happens. I've never had an automatic in anything fast. I was just talking to Cass on the phone and I said, babe, I got it to move. And she was like, meh. And I was like, what, what do you mean? Why is that bad? She said, it's, Bleh, it's an automatic. Bleh. I could hear her just throwing her guts up, right? I said, well, that's, that's supposed to be exciting. She said, yeah, but if I started being excited about automatics, would I really be Cass anymore? Like, would I really be your wife? I gotta give her that. If I had a T-56, I'd throw this 4 lady in the rat rod and put the 56 in this. <laughs> yeah, I know. I want to check the log and see what it did. All right, here we are with the log. I apologize if it's really hard to look at, but... Okay, let's go back here. This is the first... Or the... First gear pull. Or test, I should say. And I got... Before it started to spin... Okay, right here we can see 2 kilometers an hour. So right there it started to spin. We have... Now it's 14.6, which is fine. It's not a big deal. It's only 91 kPa. And 36% uh, throttle right when it started to spin. Right up here in the second test, which is right here, a third gear test, I should say. I'm looking at 37.5% throttle just getting up into kPa with no spin. 2,000 RPM. Right here, it was spinning at 2,000 RPM. I know this is not a complete, full, perfect test, but I don't want to push this transmission too much. It really, it hasn't been moving in like a year. So I don't want to go da, 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 doing pulls in this thing or, or, or testing the trans brake and burn the life out of it because it's not fluid everywhere. I know that would be childish and dumb. I've done it before. I didn't say it was a good idea. We got something. I don't I don't know if it's working yet. I have no idea. But when I get it out on the road, then I can really test it. Okay, test of the sloppy trans brake. It's off right now. Alright, it spun on me. I'm not gonna ruin the floor. Let's try it now. Switch is on. Should be in third gear. Not sure if it worked or not. I'll check the log. Oh, Craig's gonna kill me. Craig's gonna kill me. If you're watching, I'm sorry. I was just trying to transmission to make sure it works. Please don't fire me. Dude, this stuff really does clean everything. Holy. I went over the logs again, and I may have to check all the trans brake wiring again. Make sure the relay is working, all that stuff. I know the wiring to it should be fine, but I want to make sure that it's working because the log, from what I could see, looks exactly the same. 
get up around 2000 RPM, up around 36, 37% throttle and it starts to spin, then I obviously let off and hold the switch, do the same thing, exact same setup, like 90 something KPA, uh, turbo's just starting to spool, 2000 RPM, 35, 37% throttle, spin. So I'm not quite sure if it's working, but I'm gonna go over that in the next video, along with test driving this thing. And so close, I'm really, really happy that it works. I cannot wait to get it done on the road and see what it's gonna do. Now I do have a fixed pan hard bar, so next video is gonna be full of stuff to do too. Oh, I'm so excited. So at this point, I just wanna thank everybody who's helped me out here, like everyone. I can't even say names because there's way too many of you guys. Thanks everybody for watching, obviously for one. Thanks for subscribing. And I'd like to thank my patrons. And if you'd like to check out my Patreon, it is patreon.com slash station road rat rods. And uh, seems to be a couple people coming from my like Facebook Reels videos. I didn't even know what they were a month ago. And this, I just started posting for a laugh and I have like 3000 followers now. So that's kind of hilarious. So if anybody come from there, that's cool. Um, and if anybody came from the oil filter video, gotcha <laughs> so uh, i'm gonna finish it up here and thanks so much for watching and have a great night everybody